Welcome to Let's Talk About That, the show about the show. I'm Stevie, and according to all known laws of aviation, there's no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway, because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. This week's guest, feel the need. The need for YouTube's algorithm to remain fairly consistent. Please welcome Rhett and Link. Wow, so cool. Again with the crotch touching? And you're not talking either. <laughs> That's part of it. No words can be said. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Where's my hat? There it is. <sighs> Hi guys. Welcome. Thank you. What do you think about our secret handshake? Oh, I loved every minute of it. I hope I was really emoting through my face uh, while you were doing it so that people could understand just how much I loved it. We'll teach it to you. We've been working on that. <laughs> We've been working on that all week. I really like the hat placement currently. Um, I'm gonna, can I break some bee hearts? Call me currently whenever. Some, some bee quote, bee movie quote lover hearts. We were like briefly discussing this before um, because that the quote from the intro is from B movie. Oh, starring and, Jerry Seinfeld? And <laughs> a lot of people really like it because it's a really inspiring quote, but then I Googled it and when you Google things, it kind of ruins everything. Oh, because um, it's not true. And yes, yeah, so it's a nice idea, but in reality, bees do not disobey any laws of physics. If they did, bees would be responsible for ripping apart time and space whenever they flew around. In reality, bees create, which is also cool, these mini hurricanes with their wings and the eyes of these mini hurricanes have a lower pressure than the air outside, which lifts the bees Blah, upwards. blah, blah. No, Stevie, it's magic. But mini And don't ruin it for us. Mini hurricanes are kind of cool. I also wrote that quote down, and then I wrote in the part, which is like, which is also cool. But then I had to read it because I didn't remember it. So, like, I just want to be clear that at that point, I was quoting myself. But okay. in between that. You know what? I don't, even think, cool. I don't even think you needed to explain that. Which I mean, is really. Cool. Yeah. Which is also cool. Which is cool. also cool, yeah. Which is also cool. Guys, it is the season finale of El Tat. Man. No! It is also like Thank the goodness. final video on this channel for a couple of weeks. So it's like, it feels wow. like the weight is, the pressure I, is well, on. Well, I feel like I should have worn something different. This video oh. is going to be up there for two weeks. It's going to be lingering. I like what you wore. I think you look very pretty. I was fishing for a compliment. Thank you for giving it to me. <laughs> Um, it's, okay. Uh, I mean, it's, we got to take a little break. You yeah, know? but we have a lot to unpack because we've mentioned on the show about what ha what's happening this summer, um, and it's a lot. And I just wanted to take part of this episode to kind of reiterate and explain and 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 talk about some stuff that we haven't even talked about at all. Um, mm -hmm. So we're gonna do that mm -hmm. today. Uh, also. What would a season finale be without compilation videos that make you think, gosh, look at look at what we've done and yep. how far we've come? Oh, to give us that um, sense of nostalgia and accomplishment that only yeah. montages can give. Yes. You want that like that that throat feeling where you're like, is it am I gonna cry? <sighs> or, or die. Or which choke. has nothing to do with your throat, but yeah. yeah. Or Choking. am I gonna choke? Yeah, yeah. You am want gonna that am I gonna choke, choke feeling. Um so we have a couple of those and then you will not believe this, but I actually asked a sincere question on Twitter this week in, in hopes of sincere responses. Uh, so I asked, um, uh, what does GMM mean to you? And oh, wow. we got so many amazing responses, and I wanted to, to pick a couple and share them with you so we uh -oh. have that as well. The throat thing's going to happen. <laughs> but before all of that, we got to start with food, so please... Uh, Mythical chef Josh, if you could join us. Um, oh, wow. I told Josh that my my quintessential favorite food is nachos, uh -huh. and so he so kindly made nachos for the season All finale. Right. Oh, there's no catch? Uh, no, they're I don't just think nachos? That there's a catch. Yeah, yeah, I think they're just This is just, uh, just the anti-rejected stack. This cool. is the accepted snack portion. Yeah. Too bad you can't show. reach them. Uh, yeah. Do you want me to load true. a nacho for you and then walk over and hand it to you and walk back? Okay, Great. I would love to see the. I would love everyone to have the view that um, 
You're that they love. The no, that has a whole no, no, no. Slice I'm talking about uh, Josh's Josh's backside when he walks across. Oh. Yeah. not me eating. The I like nacho. to turn it and then just yeah. walk and give like the full. Yep. And then if you could just you. hover in front of me for a bit, that'd be great. While you yeah. eat it, can I pull up and show the tattoo? Yeah. I, so it was covered by your mic pack. But. That's what fine. I usually what I like to do is I like to hold my notches like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, we should get it's a two-hand oh experience. I, you know, guacamole is one of my favorite things. This looks. Yeah. This looks. It's really good. I, I, I like Cheers. a nacho. It's a little bit of work. You feel like you're earning it, but not too much work. It's interactive. Hmm. Dink it. Huh. What mm -hmm. kind of cheese is that? Mm. It's a homemade nacho cheese sauce. A little bit of American to kind of round everything out. Then a lot of Monterey Jack and then some uh, homemade salsa in there. Kind of bring that spice up. That's you, good, man. You've done it again. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. How do you like the meat? Mm -hmm. the meat's great. The meat is very good. Yeah. Yeah. Anything special about yeah. that? Well. So all I did is I took the chicken hearts and I cleaned them and deveined them and just took the fat off of them. And then I kind of finely chopped it like a steak picado. And then I just kind of braised that with some guajillo chilies and a little bit of black beans for about four hours. Zip, 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 zip. Chicken hearts. Yes. So these are chicken heart nachos. Um, there was a catch, I lied to you and I'm very <laughs> sorry. I will never do that again. Uh, you know what? We needed to. They're still good. Did Stevie know? Yeah. <laughs> did you oh, yeah. eat it? It like was it? really good. Right? Yeah, I mean, you I've blatantly that... asked if there was a catch, and I didn't anticipate that question, mm -hmm. but I think we skirted it pretty okay. Yeah, just, just yeah. I've just lying. learned that you know how to take things that are bad when Chase boils them mm. and make them taste good. Yes. That is so weird, isn't it? That is. Because I think what that we were going to take this opportunity to talk about the Saturday content during Good Mythical Summer. Oh! oh. Um, so, like we mentioned on the show, Saturdays during the summer are not going to be El Tat Saturdays. They're going to be uh, Mythical Food, Mythical Chef Josh Saturdays. Um, and we have a couple of different series that we're going to premiere on the channel. The first of which is called Food Fears. Yeah. And, it, and it links directly into what? this nacho plate. Um, you just shoved nachos in your mouth, mm -hmm. but are you okay to talk about the show? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the show is called Food Fears. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the ingredients per episode that you guys have historically really hated over the years. That might be pork uterus, that might be some sort of animal testicle, anything contained inside that you typically wouldn't want to eat. And I'm going to try and make someone less afraid of the food and make them like it by teaching people how to create a super awesome dish like these chicken heart nachos. When food fear stops, we're gonna do a few of those and then mm. it's gonna be replaced on Saturdays by... Future fast food. So I am going to try and prognosticate what, say, Taco Bell, Carl's Jr., McDonald's next big mega viral menu item is going to be using my uh, intimate knowledge of the fast food ecosystem. How intimate have trends. you been with the ecosystem? So intimate that I cannot talk about it on this show without getting the video demonetized. <laughs> okay. That's not true, um, but pretty intimate. Uh, so yeah, so I'm you know going to be trying to uh, figure out what the next big item is and then cooking it. So it's kind of going to be like, here's how you do a fast food copycat. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Awesome. But I'm excited about it be because I'm the guy that goes to good. to these places and looks in the window and then immediately walks in and gets the thing, this, the new thing in the window. Yeah. But you're going to basically tell them what they should be putting in the exactly. window. Exactly. I'm going to bring my new thing to their window um, and then ask them to eat it and then they're going to call the police and then I'm going to say, you can't arrest me, I'm a sovereign citizen. Mm. Um, Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. what that show is. No, I think I'm I'm personally very excited for both as I'm sure you guys are at home and uh it's all it's all Josh all Saturday. G give that's him, the tagline. Give, give him a a heartfelt invitation. Okay. All right, what's up YouTube fam? It's your no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, please tune in uh, every Saturday for 10 weeks to check out Future Fast Food and Food Fears. It's going to be a lot of me cooking, um a lot of wacky times. Hopefully no one throws up and hopefully People like the things I make for them. Wacky times. Wacky he times. said it. Did wacky I say wacky times? times? You said it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that. You I'm gonna what? hold you to that. In fact, there's a third show called Wacky Times. No, it's called Facky Finds. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got to have an F theme. Um. Well, thank you, Josh. And these nachos were delicious, even thank though they guys. were chicken hearts. Yes. So. Can't wait to watch, man. Um. Can I be in an episode? Yes, you may. All right. Both of you may. Uh, do you guys want to keep these? Sure. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Said, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Pretty good. Josh. Um, okay. Before we get to talking about the rest of the summer content, uh, we have our first compilation. Um, 
If you don't know how intros work on this show, well, boy, it's been a long time. So how did you watch all these episodes and then get here and not know? Um, but the first half, uh, I'm Stevie and blank is a fan submit submitted uh, intro on Twitter. Uh, and then the second half, this week's guest, is just like a little something I like to toss in. Uh -huh. um, so we made a compilation of all of the fan submitted intros, which you can go watch on one of our social medias that I should have known, but it will be in the lower third uh, at Rhett and Link, wherever it is. Lower third. And um, so uh, go check that out. And then what I'm about to show you is a compilation of some of the this week's guests intros. Uh, so look at what we've done. This week's guest had me at hello. We will pay you to make YouTube videos. Please welcome Rhett and Link. This week's guests are the poster boys for codependency. Please welcome Rhett and Link. This week's guests make at least 69% of their sexual innuendos inadvertently. Please welcome Rhett and Link. This week's guests are the reason for those don't get in the pool with active diarrhea signs. This week's guests don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing they need, relevancy. This week's guests went to town riding on a pony, stuck feathers in their hats and called them hats. Please welcome Rhett and Link. This week's guests always negotiate when someone asks a penny for your thoughts. This week's guests put their pants on just like the rest of us, only when they have to leave the house. This week's guests cut the mustard just as much as they cut the cheese. This week's guests always answered honestly whenever they encountered a got milk ad. Please welcome Rhett and Link. This week's guests believe more than anybody that two heads are better than one, but one chin is fine for two. This week's guests answer the phone with what's up for a few years beyond the acceptable time limit. This week's guests once exercised a dozen deviled eggs and checked a twice baked potato into rehab. This week's guests are super particular about the order in which their names are said. Please welcome Link and Rhett. This week's guests scream yeah and someone's in here respectively when they're using the restroom and someone knocks on the door. Today's guests do love pina pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, but their pina coladas have ground up testicles and their rain comes in the form of human chocolate fountains. This week's guests called tomatoes maters, potatoes taters, and portmanteaus man taters. This week's guests will be coming around the mountain when they come because the particular road they're driving on was made that way versus through the mountain, most likely due to construction costs or some other geological impossibility. This week's guests were last week's guests. Please welcome Rhett and Link. Welcome, gentlemen. No, that, that was, was going to be something awkward. <laughs> Did you guys see that last part? The part where, like, that just took a really long time yeah, for you yeah, to sit yeah, down? Yeah, 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 that was, that, that was awesome. How did you find that? I thought that was the best part of the video. Okay. The part with us? Yeah. <laughs> That's such an honest answer <laughs> with zero comedy behind it. <laughs> the part with us. <laughs> um, no, okay, so I loved all those intros. Too. My favorite was Man Taters. Man Taters. Uh, <laughs> check out the fan intro compilation on our Twitter, David said in the middle of that. Twitter. Uh, and thank you guys so much for sending me in those intros. Uh, I will need some more for the next season of LTAT. Boy, we really been through it. We, we've been through it, but Together. that wasn't the been through it uh, compilation. I mean, it was a little bit of been through it. Been Boy, you really it. set it up for us <laughs> yeah. to go through it. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so the rest of the summer. Yep. I just wanted to clarify what's going to be happening because yes. after this episode, we have two weeks that are dark on this channel. But that doesn't mean that we're dark with content because Correct. Correct. we're launching a bunch of new original videos featuring the Mythical team over at the Mythical Society. So you can go to mythicalsociety.com if you're not already a member and sign up. And if you are a member, you can start watching new original content next week because we're going to be dropping a new video every... Dropping. That was like... We're going to drop it. Yeah. We're gonna drop it's like an album every week. <laughs> a new video every Thursday over on Mythical Society. That starts next week. That goes all the way through summer, all the way until season 16, all the way beyond that. So uh, go, go sign up. You are also gonna be on tour this summer. So yep. if you don't have tickets, go to retinlinklive.com and let's throw up that graphic that has all of those dates so you can see if Rhett and Link are coming to a town or place near you. Lots of fun! 
There's so much. Summer 2019. Every, every day there's things. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and and uh, let people know what was up. That was so titillating. Now's the part where we start getting more emotional. Uh, I wanted to just take a peek at what we've done on LTAT thus far uh, before we break into the summer and before we come back with a new season in, in August. So here's a, a little reel of all of the fun oh. that we have had together on LTAT. Welcome to Let's Talk About That, the show about the show. I'm Stevie, and I may regret this. Today's guests are tall, funny, and not my dad's. Please welcome Rhett and Link. I didn't want to set the bar so high for this show that we would never be able to repeat it, but I also didn't want to set it low because I want people to watch. It's Saturday. Nobody's got anything to do. You know what? Let it lay, man. You don't have to say anything about it. You do you, I'll be normal, and everybody be happy. You don't have to believe in it. You don't have to not believe in it. All you have to do is be open to the possibility. I was born into a void of pure darkness. As a child, I swam in a stream of blood. And then after college, I just backpacked around Europe for a couple of months. They claim to be the number one internet morning show in Weed Patch. Do you believe that's true? I don't know. As if the show itself is not awkward enough. It's like, no, stay out here and let's get even weirder. I tell you, I am, I am excited about the rest of the year after seeing what is possible. Sing, boy! Get in that pool and sing, Jack! Does this water, water bottle float with water, water when, when filled with water? water? Yes! Any other words you'd use to describe it? A strange, weird. I would not use funny but that seems to be what they think it is. Mm -hmm. Until next LTAT, keep on BYMB. <laughs> Maybe it was a little less emotional than just... No, I cried that. a little bit. No, so when, <laughs> so when, little you, bit. when you start hearing my dad talk, yeah. and you hear it strange, weird. I thought that was me talking. Really? I, I was like, why am I talking like that? I was like, oh, it's my dad. <laughs> strange, weird. Strange. Weird. But not funny. Um, <laughs> man, that was so good, Morgan. Thank you for putting that together. Yeah, we've we've really been through it. We have yeah. been through it. It's man, it's hard to get emotional with bits like will this water <laughs> bottle float in water? But it's the music it was helpful. That was a highlight for me, though. I've been doing that on my own in the in the, in the bathtub. My you wife is. Will this water bottle float in water? She's so tired of all the water bottles in our bathtub. <laughs> Just you sitting in your bath. <laughs> come here, come here, look. Water bottles. Honey, can you bring me another water bottle? Look what this one does. <laughs> you know, I uh, think that we've gotten so many unsolicited letters. responses and letters about how much GMM means to people. Um, and, I, and we, from time to time, kind of recenter ourselves about what we're doing and, you know, what it means. And I just thought that maybe we could go to the Mythical Beasts and kind of have them put into words what GMM means to them. So I asked on Twitter, uh, what does GMM mean to you? And keep it fairly short. And I did allow screenshots of notes. So some things are a little bit longer. Um, I got so many responses. So I want to thank you guys. I don't have, I, I can't possibly go through all of them. And if I don't go through yours, just know that we saw it and uh, and it, it means a lot. Um, if you want a good cry, go over to my Twitter at Stevie W. V and you can read through all the responses. Um, but I actually had to print out <laughs> some things this time. I had 20 pages of selects and now, and then I what? whittled them down. Uh, you know, there, of course, were, were themes. One, uh, people all over the world watch GMM. So a lot of people from different places had things to say about what time GMM came on for them and how it had helped them learn to speak English or connect with this culture or find, find something in the show that maybe wasn't available in their lives wherever they lived. Hmm. Um, a lot of people use GMM as a bonding time for their family. It's the time of day where they can actually sit their entire family down and watch something together. So that was a, that was a really nice theme. And then um, we had a number of people speak out about depression and uh, issues of anxiety and how yeah. the shows help them, um, mm -hmm. you know, overcome issues like that or, or 
kind of use it as a uh, take a take a break from uh, the realities of that. But I, I mean, I want to start off with some some more perhaps straightforward uh, answers, and then and then we'll go along. Um, this person obviously gets what we're going for at Kimchi BYU. Uh, it means laughing with my kids each morning with a bowl of cereal in my hands and a prayer in my heart that they don't understand any of the innuendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, hey, that's what innuendo is for. They don't. Right. It's designed to go over the children's heads. Yeah. Um, okay, then it we It comes had... out of my mouth and still goes over my head. <laughs> right. True. Yeah. <laughs> um, then we had a, a bunch of um, kind of metaphors and wordplay uh, Oh, let's get into the wordplay. At Samantha is Texan, says, To me, GMM means when you buy cheese Ritz and eat one that has extra cheese. When you want both tots and fries and the cook accidentally put both with your meal. When you thought you left the oven on, but you turned it off. GMM is everything you need to be happy in life and feel at ease. Aww. Yeah. That's the oven good. thing. You're not going to burn your house down. Yeah. At NC Kelly writes also writes. That's part of the name. The neon moon to my rundown bar, the boot scoot to my boogie. It's been the consistent bright spot in a rough period for me, ever inspiring and enjoyable. I owe my remaining sanity to GMM and all those involved. I just love the crap out of it. Oh, Brooks and Dunn references? Yeah, love that. You know how to get our attention. Then... At Neon Moon 87, oh, gosh. I didn't even intentionally tie those things together. Really? GMM to me is like a tropical island that I would happily get stranded on for a lifetime. Very little resources, no way out. Oh, I thought you were yeah. critiquing the tweet. I was like, that is so rude. This person obviously has no access to resources. <laughs> It's an island. No, I get it. <laughs> I'm saying like our show, you know, it's like <laughs> yeah, sure. you might find a pig and eat it, but then that pig, then you you'll have to start eating other survivors. You find yourself mm-hmm. taking weird chances for survival. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it yeah what it means. At Mickey Char says, GMM is that friend you want to introduce to everyone because you know they'd all enjoy their company. Thank you for introducing us. At Praise Sharp. GMM is a haven of creativity. Ideas take physical form. Mythicality is a well-marinated bite of how the world can be a better place. Add a great crew with just as much ambition and drive as the two main guys, and you have another thing that makes the world better, laughter. Wow. Well-marinated marinated. bite. I love yes. that. I love the marinade. And props to the I mythical crew. Mar- Thank you, guys. <laughs> You're all so I'll well-marinated. pass that along. You guys are so well-marinated. <laughs> Um, just sink my teeth into you and just rip your flesh, and it's like, wow, it's perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so there was also, of course, a big theme of of family and home. At JC Lodge ninety five says, I've watched the show pretty much every day for the last seven years. I'm twenty three now, and I literally grew up watching it. Rhett and Link are like my internet dads, and I couldn't have asked for better ones. Clean your room. Seven wow. years. Can we have custody? <laughs> I, I, sure, yeah, 23, I think that's fine. We're going to speak to a lawyer about that. <laughs> At the Velvet Hook says, GMM means friendship, comedy, community, and embracing your true self. It's a light in the darkness. It's a familiar comfort. It's about something that became bigger than the sum of its parts. GMM is the best in all of us. GMM is home. Bigger than the sum of its parts. Yeah. <laughs> that's sweet. At Celestial Link says, GMM has been an escape for me when my own world has been a difficult one to be in. It's a comforting place where no matter what, everything feels good and fun. It's two best friends sharing their dream with the world and bringing people together from all walks of life. It's home. 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 Again. Home twice. We we might need to redecorate the set to make it even more homey. It's pretty homey. To lean into that. It's pretty dang homey. We could put up a we could we could we could put a bed spread. We should do it from over the, uh, we should do it from a bed. Well, well just replace the desk with the bed. There's the definitely desk. a faction of the audience that wouldn't enjoy that show. A water bed. At the real editor says GMM is not just a show but a home, a place I can go to escape and laugh. I feel inspired, confident, and silly. It's a source of joy, welcoming to everyone. GMM has helped me pursue the career of my dreams and has introduced me to some of my best friends. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. 
At Miss Buffy Lee says, GMM meant getting a relationship and a connection about something with my four-year-old son who has autism. It meant him getting a connection with his four siblings and bonding over GMM. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you notice I'm getting like more emotional with the things that. and then my voice is getting wavery? Uh, okay, so so on that theme, uh, another another strong theme is that the show has just been there for people when they need it. <laughs> um, at Kilikua28 says, GMM is a show I can turn to to help me forget about my anxiety and depression and just overall make me laugh when I'm having a bad day. Thank you, Rhett and Link and the Mythical Crew for creating something so magical. I love you all so much. Hmm. At PTJ20098223 says, As an LGBT member in a homophobic country, GMM means a funny, precious, modern Western life that I can look up to. So that, 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 okay. (laughs) (laughs) At Linky Poo for life, GMM helped me get over being in a verbally abusive relationship, and I remember the day I started watching them, and I laughed so hard I forgot about everything in the past and focused on today. All I can say is thank you to Rhett Link and all of the mythical staff. You're welcome. (laughs) <laughs> you're saying you're welcome and thank you after things. Well, she said thank you, so uh, you're welcome. Um, this was this was great. This was a poem. At Mythical Gracie, it says, hey, Stevie, I made a poem saying what GMM means to me. It's called What GMM Means to Me. <laughs> uh, uh, GMM makes me happy in so many ways. It is the bright sun in my darkest day. It brings me joy to watch Link and see him gag at any gross thing he drinks. I love spending time with his best buddy, Rhett. See him eat spicy things that burns his palate. The crew is so amazing, too. I see all the different, to see all the different foods and contraptions they make out of the blue. All aspect of the show is great. There are no imperfects that I can't even state. Can't even state. As this poem comes to a close, I just wanted to let you guys know you have amazing fans from Los Angeles to Tokyo. I don't do that on the outside. <laughs> well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Just kidding. What? Wow. There was a harmonic in that one. Yeah. I was trying to make it keep happening. Keep Gapman happen. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do, making me laugh and smile with Rhett Link and the Mythical Crew. Every day we feel so blessed to hear you guys tell us to be our mythical best. Oh, Grace, that was very yes. cute. She said she wrote it in 15 minutes. That was pretty good for 15 yes. minutes. Yes. And then this is a, a, a longer one. There's so many longer ones. I'm so sorry. I couldn't read all of them. Uh, This is from at Rhett Rhett McNeil. Um, GMM is an escape for me from the world. It's a safe place to go where I know I'm going to smile and laugh. It's one of the only constant things in my life. While everything is changing, GMM stays, and that's one of the most comforting things. GMM means being your absolute mythical best, even when you feel like you can't be yourself anymore. Not only has the show been there for me, but it has taught me so much. It taught me that it's okay to not be okay, but to always laugh despite it all. And I know it sounds crazy that two guys bathing in chicken noodle soup or eating testicles has done this for me, but it's true. GMM has given me and so many mythical beasts a home when we didn't have one before, and I'm forever thankful. We haven't bathed in chicken noodle testicles, though. That's a good idea. I'm teary-eyed. I know. Are you done? Because I'm done. No, I'm just gonna just burst with tears. No, I, uh, I, it, it is really helpful to hear those. So thanks for pulling all that together. And you know, we we do read a lot of the comments, and even when we tour and we get to meet fans, uh, and mythical beasts get to tell us a lot of the same things that we hear this way. So and in, in, in put names with faces and so on. But um, it, it's very special to know that we're special to people. And I mean, when we started, when we started making YouTube videos, there's no way we could have known that. And even when we started the show, 
and we, we said, we want you to make this a part of your daily routine, and we were seeing things like that as part of the vision of what the show would be. Uh, we still didn't anticipate. Well, we, 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 we've always been trying to entertain, you know? Yeah. It, it was very much just, oh, we're, we're just gonna make you laugh. And I, I think, A, we sort of underestimated what laughter could do for people. Uh, and having something consistent that they could laugh at. Mm -hmm. But then beyond that, the way that this community has uh, formed around the show, and then in turn, you know, you guys actually determine so much about what we do. It's like, we don't make this show in a bubble. It's not just all of us sitting around and figuring out what we're gonna do. We make this show kind of collectively as a family because you guys are so interactive and so engaged with what we're doing that so many of the things that we do are kind of an answer to any something that you've asked for or something that you've hinted at or something that we've sort of developed a sense that you might like. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this, this very much a two-way relationship that has, again, like Link said, this wasn't anything that we ever anticipated or planned on, but you helped make it a reality. Yeah, and we know that, I mean, life can throw so much at a person. And we know that, we, all of us go through things, and some of us are constantly going through things. Or, um, so you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just grateful that we stumbled upon because we decided to do a daily video. I'm just grateful that we stumbled upon a format which creates a, a playground for us to be ourselves, so that somehow by osmosis it encourages people to also be themselves, just yourself, be as weird as you, uh, and. Also, it's, it's something that people count on, you know, it's uh, the consistency of it and knowing that we're, we're creating this world as an expression of, I mean, our friendship and, and, and beyond that, an extension of the creativity that, that all you guys as mythical crew members and the ones that aren't here that I'll, I'll speak to through the camera too are um, helping infuse the show with um, who we all are as a family, and, I, and it, I'm really glad that that transfers and creates a safe environment for people to, if that, if that needs to be an escape or some sort of a support moment, that 10 to 20 to 30 minutes every single day, um, I'm, I, I think w we are all, the two of us, the three of us, everybody here, I know I speak for all of us in saying that we're just truly honored that we can be a safe place where you can, and like kind of like a comedic haven uh, in the midst of whatever's going on in your life. So thank you for making yeah. all of us a part of your daily routine and for watching and enabling us to continue to have fun making this show with you. It's been a great season 15 and a good. great and a great run with LTAT. Yeah, I think I don't have anything to add to that. I think that was perfect. So this is the, the last time for this season that we'll say our final line. Until, Until next, LTAT, keep on BYMB. Oh.